Okay. Thank you, precious Lord, for bringing us to this place that we might lift up the Lord's name in worship. Father God, we uh, ask your blessings upon those who are here. We ask for traveling mercies upon those who may still be on their way here. Help us, Father God, to come in with uh, open minds and open hearts that we might receive what it is that you would have us to know. And that, Father God, that we might carry that with us when we leave this place, that we might lift up someone else's life. Father, we thank you that for the blessings of keeping us throughout the past week. We thank you, Lord, for uh, helping us to strive to walk in your righteousness. We thank you, Lord, for uh, our election day. We elected a new president of the United States. Yes. Father, we just ask that we come together as a country, and as a country, uh, move forward in, your, in, the, in the ways of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for uh, this, uh, this study group tonight. We thank you for training to rain ministries and our angel in our house, Dr. Manny Price. We ask the Lord to continue to uh, help her in her health to progress back to full strength. Blessed Savior, we ask your blessings upon each and every person here. And uh, thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Glory. <coughs> have one of those sitting around the house okay, somewhere. Okay, so you get a hold to it. it. Yeah. It's, it's a great little book. Yeah. And uh, a friend of mine down in Waynesboro was telling a friend of hers about my condition, etc. And uh, and the, the woman said, I'm going to send her a book. And so she's a pharmacist, and she sent me a book about God's medicine. And I just thought that was so... Um, something. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it because this woman has been educated and trained and all of that for medicine to take care of everything, uh, you know, prescriptions <coughs> and that type of stuff. But something happened to her. Uh, my friend didn't know exactly what her condition was, but she got a hold of this book. And because of this little book, this pharmacist um, realized that God's medicine is the most powerful Amen. And so, uh, because I, I, I couldn't, God wouldn't give me anything to teach, and I'm just resting. And I looked on, on my uh, table, and there this was God's creative power for healing. And I, I sat down and, and I read it, and I thought, oh my God, this is so powerful. And this is what I'm going to, I'm talking to myself in my house. I'm saying this. <laughs>
It's just like taking a capsule, like taking a pill every day. It's word. Um, and then there's uh, chapter four, it's God's medicine, and that's what the scriptures are. And five is understanding the principles. So we're just going to jump right in here. Charles Caps has written many books. If you haven't um, seen this one, have you ever heard of him before, Charles Caps? He's a well-known writer. Yes, he is. He is. So I'm going to just kind of feed this to you tonight. And uh, if there's a comment that y'all want to make to help it along, please do that. But it starts out building blocks of life or death. Your words are building blocks of which you construct your life and future. Your words set the cornerstones of your life, and you live within the confines of that boundary you create with your own words. Situations, circumstances, and conditions are all subject to change, but with the support of your words, you can establish them in your life forever. So understand that what comes out of your mouth <coughs> has great significance. It builds your life, whether it's negative or positive. And a lot of times we say little, little sayings that we think don't really mean anything, but everything that comes out of our mouth has a significant meaning. So we don't need to pick up little sayings or, or little things that we hear people say just thinking that it's nothing because it, it is. You have power in your tongue to build, to tear down, uh, even other people. You can tear down other people, but what you say, what comes out of your mouth. <clears throat> okay, the following article entitled, Patient Knows Best, appeared in the August 1991 issue of the Reader's Digest. A, person, a person's answer to the question, is your health excellent, good, fair, or poor? is a remarkable predictor of who will live or die over the next four years according to mm -hmm. new findings. And this is some research that they did and they wrote this article. A study of more than 2,800 men and women, 65 and older, found that those who, those who rate their health poor are four to five times more likely to die in the next four years than those who break their health excellent. Can you imagine? The people that said that when they asked them about their health and they said that their health was poor, they died in the next four, next four years. More of them died in the next four years than those that said that their health was excellent. So what comes out of your mouth when describing yourself, describing your health, these findings are supported by a review of five other large studies, totaling 23,000 people, which reached similar uh, conclusions, according to Ellen Eisler, a sociologist at Rutgers University and uh, epidemiologist. So this is this was and also a study from Yale uh, University, which I'm real familiar with because I grew up in. I, I didn't grow up going to Yale, but I grew up in Yale. It <laughs> and uh, from if you if you lived in New Haven and your parents were uh, any about anything education wise or whatever, Yale was wide open. You could uh, go learn anything. So when I say I, I grew up in Yale, there was always something going on there, all of the time. And my mother, single parent, she. Um, she took advantage of everything that was available there. So I said I grew up in Yale, or I grew up at mm -hmm. Yale. Anyway, so that was an article that was uh, published after much research, for letting me know that what you feel, what comes out of your mouth is so important that you can even speak death to yourself. People that have, and this is back to Charles, he says that people that have an image of themselves being in poor health will talk about poor health. Even though they may be in good health, they seem to live out the reality of the image they have of themselves, even
somebody to death. Well, that's that's just an old saying, but now I say I love you to life. Yeah. <laughs> so it's more positive. It's living your living. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, I can, I can think of a thousand things, uh, examples where friends of mine uh, growing up, and this guy, were always, he always said, I'll never live to be 21. I'll never live to be 21. And sure enough, uh, he was killed at 19. Wow. So it's amazing yeah. how, like you said, he was the best that's in one of the ways the Bible says that we're like we're made in the image of Christ. We're well, part of that image is being able to speak things into existence. So we have to be careful. Call this to be time to say the word. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what we as Christians need to do. And we need to pass that on. Even to those in the world. We need to pass 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 it on. You're okay. God's got mm -hmm. you. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Somebody 
if I may. Proverbs 18, verse 21.
technology that is capable of eliminating sickness and disease in a natural manner. So we can speak God's word to heal ourselves as well as somebody else. But we can get the what you speak in is so true. But it is so unheard of. Yourself, I don't care what it is, headaches, back 
it, put it, hard it, whatever it is, and there's no disease, no disease on the face of this earth that is not subject to the word of God. Amen. I don't care what it is. That's right. And we learn to walk in divine, claim your divine help. I walk in divine, keep telling yourself that every day. Mm -hmm. I walk in divine help. I walk in the power of God. I walk in divine help. And see, don't that situation turn. It'll turn it. It's got to. Because it's under the blood. You're speaking the word of God. God honors what you say. And you walk in faith. It can't do nothing but me. Can't do nothing else. Can't do nothing else. Can't do nothing else. That's why you keep it. Because you are the I'm going to tell you, when I got, first got diagnosed, Dr. Ron was the first person that I told about the mm -hmm. uh, cancer. But he brought me a prayer. He wrote me a prayer, now it's in that pocketbook right now, <laughs> to pray every day, every day, every day for the cancer. And then when the neuropathy showed up, he uh, rewrote the prayer to include the neuropathy for me to pray every day for myself. Now, I couldn't call him and say, Dr. Ron, pray for me, you know, uh, no, he wrote a prayer for me to pray for me. Yeah. And guess what? It works. How, how long have you been out with, 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 with your survival? Nine months. Nine months. Nine months, yeah. Nine months, so about two years. Yeah. Nine months. All I had to do was show up. But during that time, I was praying for myself with those, the prayer. And you know, he gave us, um, and if y'all don't have a copy of that prayer, that he gave us to pray every morning. Commanding the morning. Commanding the morning. Yeah, now, I pray that. And what it is, is it's uh, putting your day in order. Mm -hmm. You doing this for yourself. It puts your whole day in order. It puts the, the enemy in his place and, you, and it's long. But the days that I miss reading that, and I read it to myself, I know, I can tell. <laughs> I can tell the difference. And don't let me go two or three days not doing it. It's like, oh, hell breaks loose. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, Lord, let me, I'm sorry. Let me get back to doing it. Because sometimes we can get out of sync. Okay. We get uh, involved, like my working, uh, having to be at work at 8.30 and, and not getting up early enough to do that prayer. But I need to get early, up early enough to do that prayer, especially if I'm going out in the workforce. So anybody that's interested in it, I, I can make some copies of it. He gave them out. Um, some of some of you I probably don't even know who you are, but I'm telling you, I can find it every day. Any any other comments? Uh, did somewhere doesn't he talk about in that book somewhere? Uh, he created how God creates the fruit of our lips. You know, the, the, the scripture says he creates the fruit of our lips. Yeah, a couple of them. The proper one, I think, is in Proverbs, and the other one is in Numbers. Yeah. If we was about to this, I'm going to read some of these, yes, and then that one is in here. He has a lot of good. So you, you got this book? Get I used out. to. Exactly. Get another one. It'll help mm -hmm. me. It's wonderful. I mean, I just, it helps me so much. A reminder. It's just a reminder. Sometimes we just need a, um, a refresher course. And that's what this is. Refresher course. <laughs> okay, God's building blocks. And here, here are a few of uh, many scripture. Here are a few of many scripture reasons why I believe this so strongly. And I'm going to read a few of them. Um, Job 22 and 28. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy way. That's a great one. Proverbs. If you want to just write down the scripture, you can look it up later. Proverbs uh, 18 and 7, a fool's mouth in, in his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. That's the one you were thinking of. Uh, there's one that specifically says he creates the fruit of our lips. Okay. It's probably in here. Uh, Mark 11 and 23. I think we read that one. Can you read that? Was that the one you read? No, I read probably. Okay, Mark 11, 23, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall
shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. That's also in Matthew. Yes. Yes. It is. It is. And, and you know, you be thinking sometimes new uh, preachers, new converts think that they talking literally about a mountain. I thought I'd turn it up. Did you watch it? Turn it up. I was thinking when I was going down. Yeah, it's getting warm there. Um, that mountain is not talking about a literal mountain. It's talking about the mountains in our lives. Yeah. Because that's what we're talking about. Finances, illness, sickness, those kind of mountains. And they, we can speak to them just like you just said. And they got to go. Proverbs 16 and 9, a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Thank God. Amen. Proverbs 18, 20 and 21, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat. The fruit thereof. That's Proverbs 18, 20, and 21. James, I'm not going to read all of them, go a little bit further. James uh, 3 and 6. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Yeah. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire, on fire of hell. <laughs> James 3 and 6. Proverbs, Proverbs 21 and 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. Keep your mouth and your tongue to you keep your soul from trouble. Isaiah 57 and 19. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off. To him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. Okay, these are all real short. I'll just go through them real quick. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. That's Proverbs 10 and 11. Proverbs 12 and 6. The mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Proverbs 12 and 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. Proverbs 12 and 18. The tongue of the tongue of the wise is health. The tongue of the wise is health. That's powerful stuff. Okay. Gonna go to divine healing is a special cure. Medical science aids healing through physical means by administering medicine into the physical body. God's divine healing is spiritual. It is administered through the human spirit. Somebody find 1 Corinthians 2 and read verses 9 through 12. And then somebody else find Psalms 107. We're going to read verse 20. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 9 through 12. In the second one verse. Um, Psalms. 107 verse 20. First Corinthians 2 verses 9 through 12. Really? Really? Uh -huh. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. God has also, but God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God know no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us from God. Amen. Okay, and there's the other one, Psalms 107, verse 20. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. 20. He 
sent forth his words and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Amen. So God's divine healing is spiritual. It's a spirit. So it goes to the spirit. Whereas medicine, man's medicine, goes into the flesh. And can you imagine a pharmacist reading this and getting so much out of this and he's passing it on to others? I think that's just powerful. Notice that it didn't say that God sent his word to heal, but he sent his word and healed. It doesn't say that God sent his word to heal, but, but he sent his word and healed. God considers it done. God is no respecter of persons, but he does respect faith in his word. And that's what you were saying. We have to believe the word. We have to have faith in his word. And if we have faith in his word, it will do exactly what it says. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my saying. Let, this is Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. That's a good one too. Proverbs 4, 20 through First of all, notice that God's word is life. It is also health or medicine to all your flesh. God's word will heal your body, but it does it through spiritual means. Healing can be received into the human spirit through the word. Once it is conceived there, it permeates the physical body. Once it goes into the spirit, you really got it. You know, sometimes you read the word and it just goes. <laughs> and, and, and if you're reading at night or, or you're reading, a, you got to read so much before you go to bed and you read, 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 read. And when you get to the end and then you be like, I don't know what I read. <laughs> so you just zip through it. You, it didn't go in you. And I do that. I have done that so many times. And, I, and I'll go back and start over again. Or I'll read a paragraph of scripture prescriptions and I can't go any further because I don't know what I just read so I got to go back. That's studying the word. Now I took a course some years ago where um, we were to read the Bible all the way through and the instructor told us do not get a Bible with study notes. Just the word and read it because if you have study notes you, you're not going to get through it in a year because you're going to go back and you got to go back and check out this and go back and check. So if you're just wanting to read the Bible in a certain amount of time, then don't get a Bible that's going to stop you so you can just read it. And it, it still does you good. You don't get all of out of it where if you were studying it. But it still gets the word in you. So she was telling us that we, she wanted us to read the Bible in a specific amount of time for her class. Because what the class was was studying the Bible. She wanted us to see the difference between reading and studying. So she told us to just get a Bible that don't have no references at all and read it in, I don't remember, it was a month, maybe a month. It might have been a month. And you can do it if you just read it. But if you get, if you got a Bible that's got any kind of study notes in it and you any kind of student of the Word, you're going to stop and see what, what is that about. And that's going to slow you down. And that's fine because now you're studying rather than just reading through the word. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I like this part. Just as you would take medicine into your physical body to aid healing by physical means, so you must receive God's word concerning healing into your spirit for supernatural healing. So just like you take medicine over the counter or prescribe prescription, you take this medicine. Actually, this medicine works better. Sometimes it works in combination with. Because we would never say don't take no medicine that's not to give you like some people have done. Told people that that's not right. But you don't know where their faith is. You know, you tell somebody stop taking your medicine. If they don't have the right faith, 
for the word to work for them, they need to take their medicine.
When God's word becomes engrafted or infused into your spirit, it has become a part of you. When his, anybody feel like, is there any scripture in here that, is there a scripture that you feel like is a part of you? Any scripture that, that you know, you just know is a part of, it's just so automatic. But that's what we have to do with the healing scriptures as well. It just make that scripture a part of you. If you need a healing, got a headache, pop. All of a sudden that scripture pops up for healing. And either the headache is gone or you need to take the, the medicine to get. Sometimes when you take an aspirin, it don't work right away. You might have to take it again. But how much faith do you <laughs> think about it? How much faith do you have that that aspirin is going to work? When you take that aspirin, you expect for that headache to go away, don't you? That's what we have to do with the word. That when we take the word in as medicine, we have to expect that it's going to work. Just like we expect that, uh, that aspirin is going to work. And this, this is supernatural. It's awesome. Okay. I get excited, Judge. When God's word becomes engrafted or infused into your spirit, it has become a part of you. It cannot be separated from you. It is not only your thought and affirmation, it is you, the word made flesh. Then your flesh will reflect the life of that word. When God's word concerning healing takes root in your flesh, it becomes greater than disease, and healing is the result. It becomes greater than the disease that you're trying to get rid of. When you take it into you, and when you when you take it into you and make it a part of you, make that word a part of you, it becomes greater than whatever you're going through. The image that the word creates in you is already a reality. Realm. When you speak God's word from your heart, then faith gives substance to the promises of God. Your faith frames your world day. Jesus made it very plain. A good man out of, out of good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. So when I pray that prayer every morning, it orders my steps and it orders my day. It takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it. Right. Y'all got anything? Anybody got anything you want to say? You want to stop me? One way it always helps. This is so amazing that you're teaching on this tonight. So I just, uh, today, in the Psalms a lot, and I pray you're breaking on really the, the higher level of reality tonight. God is all powerful and omnipotent. And it, it reinvigorated me to go after you in my own life. But uh, anyway, uh, what helpful, what I like to think about is we're bringing the, the, uh, the unseen, the spiritual realities, which are, which are more, uh, that, that are, are um, um, you know, we're, we're causing the sea realm to bow to the word. We're causing ca 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 the word to, you know, we're, if you believe in the word, and you might not see it in the sea realm, but mm -hmm. in the unseen, we, we focus, we choose not to focus on the things that are seen, but the unseen. Right. Did y'all hear her? Did you hear? That the unseen world world has to bow to the word. To the word. And that's so powerful. Yeah. You know, look, I just uh, so long for the day when there was a corporate pursuit of levels of anointing that like would break on through the things that have been, you know, unhealed or mm -hmm. healed and you know, break on through the more in terms of again the it's so powerful. The word is so powerful that it breaks through everything. Yes, sir. I was going to say a lot of times. I thought that thing wanted to turn off. Okay, I thought I'd turn it off. I'm talking to him. A lot of times, a lot of people don't understand is that the resistance, the enemy, is at work trying to destroy or undermine. Some people would just accept that and say, well, uh, say they won't try to fight, or they won't try to fight the cause. A lot of times, you just got to rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to time out the time out the time out the time, and that will let it go. It will stop, it will cease, it will just, and if you don't 
say anything, it'll be fun, it'll be fun. Yeah, a, a, a pastor friend of mine preached this sermon a long time ago. You don't tell the devil to stop, you won't. That's good. And we don't try to learn to stop Satan, because that's what it is. We don't try to learn to stop Satan. Okay, and it ain't necessarily Satan, a whole lot of times it's just him. It's just the, the, the demonic force that's trying to discourage you, or especially he's trying to do something for God. He's trying to get to church, he's trying to uh, carry out something in his ministry, he's trying to do whatever it is that a project God got you doing, the enemy's going to try to find some kind of way to stop it. And if you just allow him to keep doing it without rebuking, without fighting, without fighting back, God, he calls us to just roll over because the devil show up. That's right. He calls us to put the enemy in his place, like he's talking about the best spiritual realm. you got to speak because the enemy is subject to the word of God. Mm -hmm. He has to be obedient. He has to obey the word of God. He can't stand the blood of Jesus. Put the blood of Jesus on to see what happens. He got to know. He, he got to stand it. Yeah, okay. But if you don't know that, then you allow the enemy to walk all over. Yeah. But God and sometimes we forget. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we got to have a, a little refreshment for us. Exactly. I want to read James, uh, right quick. Okay. Uh, James 5 and... Uh, Start at 14. I'll start there. If any among you heard of me, one time, if any among you are wicked, let him pray. If any merry, let him sing songs. If there are any sick among you, let him. And this is instruction. A lot of times, this is what we don't do. Instead of being obedient to the instruction that God gives, follow up without the rest. If there are any, among, any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. A lot of times people are sick. It ain't they, they just sick, they sick, they sin sick. And we just, it's not for us just to judge, but it's for us to pray. Mm -hmm. And God will do the cleansing. Mm -hmm. I was just to have faith and pray for the individual, and God is to do the rest. We got a part in this, but our part is just obedience to what God say do. It's his job to do the healing. We can't heal nobody. Exactly. It's his job to do the healing. But if we stand in faith, just like we prayed for a group, don't even know the man. Ain't never seen him. But I know him. I might have seen him one time, but I remember. But nobody else had ever seen the man. We stood right there and prayed for him, and it wasn't but a little while later that man walked out of the hospital. He didn't have two weeks to live. That's that's the power of prayer and faith. faith. Yeah, yeah. When we learn to continue to do that, God will do it every time. We get wiped out to do stuff. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants us to. God wants yeah. us to. We're not here for, I mean, you know, the, 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 the body of Christ is not here for half time of it. God put us here for a reason. And it's our job to battle the forces of the enemy. That's, That's what right. we're here for. That's what we're here for. Yep. And sometimes we forget that. Yes, ma'am. That's what we're here for.
It's around the house somewhere. I don't remember if she had it. And I need to look at my book. Because I probably got one too. But I said, let's go ahead and do that. That'd be wonderful. Okay. Faith possesses reality. An example of this is found in Mark 5, 25 through 28, where the woman with the issue of blood said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. She continued to speak until she saw herself well. Amen. That's what we got to do. I have to continue to speak the word until I see all of the tents gone. Mm -hmm. And my numbers continue to come down, mm -hmm. but they're not all the way down. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Ron told me to, to walk around saying, uh, what's that um, game show that comes on TV? Come on down. Come on down. <laughs> Sometimes you need other people to pray with the joint faith. You know, to pray with you. 
And sometimes some things go not go move except by fashion and plan. So all these elements work together, you know, but you just have to let God show you which one is, is, is the which. I mean, there's some people just lay hands on. Okay, y'all lay hands and just speak to them. And that's, they'll, they'll be. I like what you said about the current. Mm -hmm. The current. But the block, the wattage might not be enough. Uh -huh. Because there's a block in you, you're too much in the seen realm, you're not tapping the unseen realm. Spirit, right. And Spirit, that was so good, Carl. And, and I would just add, it's still real important to keep your, your words lined up with faith. So exactly. that the healing doesn't fully manifest the first time. You know, you shouldn't walk away and say, oh, I'm not healed. You should just, Lord, I believe you by faith. I, I receive my healing. Lord, continue the healing work. You know, mm -hmm. the way that breaks the yoke and, and the yeah. healing and, and increase yeah. my faith and so on and so on. And not just go in the towel. Again, when Jesus prayed <laughs> for the people that had the men that had leprosy, he told them, he prayed for them. But as they walked away, that's when their healing began. It wasn't right there in front of him. Right they right they left in faith, believing, then the, then the healing came. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good, good stuff. Y'all get, getting this? Amen. This is a good refresher course. It's good stuff. It's really good stuff. Amen. It is. God is good. Okay, let's see. God's word is medicine. God's word is spoken in of in Proverbs 4 and 22 as being medicine to all our flesh. It is the most powerful medicine available today, and it is capable of healing your body without side effects. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no side effects no, what God is doing. It's all right. <laughs> oh, God. Our confession of the word of God calls for healing, which is already ours, but is not in manifestation in our body. And no, I am not teaching against, he, this is Charles saying, no, I am not teaching against doctors or medicine. Right. But don't depend on doctors or medicine alone to keep you healthy. Right. There are some diseases that medical science cannot cure, Amen. but if you need a doctor, see a doctor. Many lives are saved every year through medical help. There are medicines today that are beneficial in aiding the body's healing process. If you are taking medicine, mix faith with it by saying, I believe I received my healing in Jesus' name. Man's medicine will not heal you and generally will not keep you from being healed. Yet there are some medicines today that have so many side effects, they seem to be worse than the disease. So ask some questions and find out what you are taking. Most medicines will help hold down the symptoms while you are applying God's principle concerning healing and health. I take chemotherapy, poison, mm -hmm. in my body um, once a week. Well, now, now I'm taking two one week, one the next week, and nothing the next week. But in that, I pray. Because this is poison they're putting in me. And so I got to pray that the poison don't kill me, mm -hmm. but help me. <laughs> and that God intervenes. Because he's really the healer. So if I just decide I'm not going to take chemo, I could just say I'm not going to take chemo. I don't know if my faith level is there. I'm following instructions that the doctors are giving me. And... Um, I haven't heard the Lord say to me, stop taking chemo. Right. Now, if, I, if God tells me, and I know it's him to stop taking chemo, yeah. that's the end of the chemo. <laughs> <laughs> but I have not heard that. Mm -hmm. But I do know that the chemo is not what really is going to get rid of the, the cancer for me. Mm -hmm. It might shrink the tumor. It might bring the numbers down. But it's God that is going to heal me totally. That's right. That's right. I believe that, Amen. you know, with everything that's in me. So I follow the instructions. Mm -hmm. um, he says, I don't advocate that you throw your medicine away and rely on confession alone unless the Lord directs you to do so. That's right. It is true God has provided healing for us through his word, but we must learn to appropriate that healing by making the word a part of our daily vocabulary. I believe
only that being taught properly and by practicing your faith, you can grow to a point where it will be a common thing for you to receive healing through the word of God. But it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time to develop your faith. So if you have a life, if you have a life or death situation where the doctors say if you don't take have an operation immediately, you will die. In other words, the disease has a head start on your faith. My advice would be to have the op to have the operation and believe God for a quick recovery. Use some common sense and don't do foolish things through spiritual pride and call it faith. That's some good advice. It takes time to develop faith to operate in these principles. So don't let anyone put you under condemnation for going to doctors or having an operation. And people will try to do that. In other words, operate on your level of faith, but don't stay on that level forever. Continue in God's word until you develop faith in the healing power of God's word. God's word is creative power. The world were framed by the word of God. Confessing the word of God can also change your world. It can change an image of sickness into an image of healing and health. Operating in these principles is not easy. It takes discipline and commitment. It's not um, good enough to just read these confessions. And he's going to give some confessions, and it'll be great if we get that book. Uh, because it's, uh, I'll read a couple of them, and then I'll read the latter part of the book. Uh, here's a couple of them. And they're all scripture. Um, to, he says to be spoken by mouth three times a day until faith comes. Then once a day to maintain faith. If circumstances were worth double the dosage, there are no harmful side effects. <laughs> you can take as much as you want. And some medicine, I, I've got some medicine that they give me that if I take too much of it, I will be betting in the suitcase. This is crazy because <laughs> it's that strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing about it is that uh, people want it. They want to buy it. They want it. I'm very careful about taking that medicine because I can't. I do not want to be addicted to pain medication or any addicted to anything. But I'm telling you, if I was to take more, I'd be walking around like a zombie. <laughs> Some people desire to walk around like zombies. They don't know God. I, the zombie I want to be is spirit-filled and just as wacky about Jesus. Just, just one of them people that you're crazy. He is crazy. Yes, I am in Jesus. Amen. Okay, here's what has such a power of wealth and set on my mind that the rest of the world is the one that you know they are messed up. Yeah, they think it's us sometimes. And it's you know. But you can't tell them all the time. So, you know what God showed me? Uh, I was having a problem with a person, a godly person. And they were doing some things that a godly person should not do. And I was having a problem with that. You know, I'm like, what is the matter with them? And the Lord showed me, I was watching TV one night. Sometimes I, I watch TV late at night there at the... Um, there's a gospel program that comes on. I mean, way real late. And the minister was saying, and he described this person, I know that it was God speaking to me. <laughs> he described this person that I was having a problem with, totally. And he said, you have to pray for them, not judge them, not find the fault in them, not get mad at them, because you cannot change them. You got to take them to prayer. You have to pray for them, and that just because I know it was God. Taught, he just read right out of the television at about four o'clock in the morning to tell and then tell me to stop acting like I was acting. That is not becoming a woman of God. You got to pray for people, not judge them. You don't do that. Amen. And he'll do that in such a way that you know it. I know that was God. Because number one, I didn't have no business being up that time of morning. <laughs> That's right. Turn the TV on, and it was, um, he's in 
Charlotte. I swear to I can't think of his name right now, but it's the ministry out of Charlotte. And um, the minister was, and he, ta he was talking to me, Manny, Dr. Manny. He jumped up together. <laughs> okay, I, I'm going to read it one or two of these, and then I'm going to read the latter part of it since we're running out of time. But, God's medicine. It's got lots of scriptures in here for you to read daily. Some of them are for specific things like uh, heart and blood. Proverbs 12, verse 14, and chapter 14, verse 30. Thank you, Father, that I have a strong heart. My heart beats with the rhythm of life. My blood flows to every cell of my body, restoring life and health abundantly. And so, speaking right to the problem, uh, arteries and cells. In Jesus' name, my arteries will not shrink or become clogged. Arteries, you are clean, elastic in function, as God created you to function. And so there's lots of different scriptures, so we can get a hold of this book. It's going to be good for us. The latter part of the book is talking about understanding the principle. Now that you have gone through the scriptural confessions, let's look at the principle that could be the key to you being a partaker of God's provisions concerning your healing. There is probably no other subject as important as your healing and health than the principle of calling things that are not. We see in Romans 4, verses 17 through 22, that Abraham became fully persuaded that God would do what he had promised. Mm -hmm. The way he became fully persuaded was by calling those things which were not manifest as though they were. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about that just a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. We pick up this on, we pick up on this in verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Here Paul is referring to Genesis, uh, the 17th chapter. You will notice that God called Abram the father of nations before he had the, the promised child. And he taught Abram to do the same. God changed Abram's name to Abraham which meant father of nations, or multitudes. This was the means he used to convince Abraham to call for what he did not yet have in reality. God has established it by promise, but Abraham had to call it into reality by mixing faith with God's word. Every time he said, I am Abraham, he was calling things that were not yet manifested. Abraham did not deny that he was old. He didn't go around saying, I'm not old, because he was old. But he said, I am Abraham, father of nations. Every time he said that, this was God's method of helping him change his image, and it caused him to be fully persuaded. You will find that a lot of times when I'm ministering, or there are people that I call by their calling, by who, what they're called to be. And that's to put it in them even more. Pastor Carl, I call him Pastor Carl, uh, Deacon. And sometimes I don't know what to call you. And sometimes the Lord will have me call you evangelist. And then I guess it's whatever you need to hear at the time. Sometimes because there's a prophetic anointing on you, I, I can say prophet. But whatever God, um, puts in my spirit to call you, that's what I call you. That's how come I talk, that's why I call you different things. It's because he, he, yeah, he's true. having me to put that in you, plug that in you, plug that in you. Pastor Carl is not a pastor uh, per se now, but he is a pastor. That is his calling, that is what he will be. And so every time I say Pastor Carl, every time he introduces himself as Pastor Carl, it's putting it more and more into him. Told you. <laughs> so what? What do you say? <laughs> oh, you told him. You've been telling him that all the time, haven't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 
Pastor Carl, that's who he is. Okay. And sometimes people don't understand why I do that, but that's a part of what God has instructed me to do. Uh, from training to range and uh, speak into people's lives. That's, that's what I do. Okay. I'm going to read some stuff that I got underlined here. Um, giving voice to God's word is a method of calling for things that God has given by promise and are not yet manifest. So when you call things um, that are not as though they are, you're, you're giving voice to God's word. If God says it, it, it is so. So whenever you repeat that, you're giving voice to God's word. You are establishing what God has said to be true concerning healing, even though it is not yet a reality in your body. You don't deny that sickness exists, but you deny its right to exist in your body. You don't have no right. Because you have been redeemed from the curse of the law and delivered from the authority of darkness. God has also given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Mm -hmm. These things belong to you. You find out that in 2 Peter, first chapter, verses 3 and 4. When you are sick and confess that you are healed by the stripes of Jesus, mm -hmm. you are calling for what God has already given you, even though it is not yet manifest. I want them to believe that God will bring forth the manifestation. I want them to agree with God what he has already said about his people. If we do that, then God will bring it to pass. There's nothing hard about it. We should have a problem believing. And if we can just settle down, settle in our hearts and minds, like you just said, the word of God is perfect, it's true, God is right every time, and it goes wrong about nothing. So God speaks in his heart and say, by his stripes, you heal. Guess what? You heal. Even though you may not see the manifestation right then and there, but the healing is on the way. Because God can't lie. His word never fails. Yeah. God speaks to say, you are healed by his strength. Guess what? <laughs> it might be tomorrow before it gets there, but it's coming. Hmm. I guarantee you, because God can't fail. That's right. He cannot fail. That's right, and his word is true. Amen. Every and uh, the more we, we go to church on Sunday, Bible study, and, and do those things. We have to also have to study at home. Yes. We have to read the word at home. Get in the word. I know you do. That's what you do. You dig all the time in, in the word. <laughs> and um, it helps. It does it help? Well, it's just the art of explaining that the word mm -hmm. to the ones who see now. Or see what's going to happen to us as far as our Christology and how it works. Yeah. Sometimes I, I, when I'm not feeling good, sometimes I don't feel like um, reading. Well, not so much now as before when, when it was really getting it. I recorded a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I recorded that morning prayer. Mm -hmm. It's in my stolen phone. I hope they listen to some stuff that was in that phone. I've been no, I got this little phone now because the smartphone got stolen. Oh, if you get your smartphone back, there's a free app called Bible.is, uh -huh. the audio Bible. And oh, so yeah. it's a dramatic version. It's really good translation. Oh. Have to go after it one. And you can just play it on and on. You can play it in the car and you can just yeah. play it and it'll stay calm by hearing. Yeah, I, that was, well, not that particular one, but I had a lot of Bible stuff on that phone. But I'm believing God that I'm going to get another one. Um, well, I would love to have that. I actually want a better one. You version does it too. I want a bigger and better one. I'm, I'm asking you. <laughs> I'm asking God for a bigger and better one. I like the big phone, but they're going out of style now. So I think that I should be able to get one because everybody's going to smaller phones. So I, and I need a bigger one. <laughs> But God's going to work that thing out. One way or the other, I'm going to get that phone. I did, was able to put the sword Bible on this little phone. And it's one, I, I love that, that um, program. It's great. Okay. I want y'all to get this book. I just want to get stuff in there. Denial 
deny in sickness won't make you well, but by mixing faith with God's word, you are crowded for the promise of God to be manifest in your body. If you feed the spirit man God's word, it will make demands on the flesh to line up with the word of God. I'm going to read all this to you too. When you exercise, Deacon Walt, you can start getting ready for the offering. I'm going to be finished when I, um, when I read this last part. If you feed the spirit of, of man God's word, it will make demands on the flesh to line up with the word of God. When you exercise, you demand more energy from your body. The heart beats faster and more blood flow brings more oxygen to uh, body cells and your body responds to your demands in a natural manner. But you must make the demand on it before it will respond or it's not going to do nothing. Even your dog or your cat will respond to the command of your voice. How much more shall your body respond to the demands made upon it by the word of God spoken out of your mouth? Mm -hmm. When you tell it. That's right. The truth is, your body always responds to your words in some manner, e either for better or worse. Mm -hmm. So choose your words carefully. Mm -hmm. Because whatever you speak, your body is going to respond to that. So do it, speak the right thing. Remember, if you don't remember nothing else tonight, remember that what comes out of your mouth makes a difference. Amen. Makes a big difference. Amen. So be careful about you baby. Be careful about what you say. About and, and this this is working on yourself. The, the same thing applies to others. But we want to, tonight we're talking about us, Amen. personally. Mm -hmm. We want things better for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we got to speak healing to us. You drink anything out of this tonight? Yeah, yeah man. Very good. Yeah. I know I went to what God wanted because I couldn't find, I couldn't come up with nothing else. And then all of a sudden there it was. Father, we just thank you for just being you, Father. We just 